Welcome back to The Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a drama history film called, Strawman. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins in the year 1940. The remains of a murdered Japanese soldier, Showa, who died at the age of 19, are being taken to a small town in Taiwan by Japanese soldiers. General Junichi Yamashita complimented him. The marching band began playing the instrument once the village chief received his remains. After this, the soldiers returned to their camp, and the people went about their daily routines as usual. In contrast, a straw man observes the Japanese collection and recruitment of young children like the Chan brothers' family. Some Taiwanese refuse to join the military, so they serve the Japanese soldiers as a show of respect. Chan's deaf elderly mother has come up with a way to keep them inside the home by putting a solution on their eyes that causes trachoma and color blindness. In other words, they're not wanted in Japan. Children steal and bring home stolen crops from the field because of a poor harvest. Meanwhile, Narcissus, the village's most beautiful lady whose husband was killed in battle, becomes useless and further enslaves the family. It's a new day, and the general is out hunting for his missing chicken. The chicken broke into a little home where Big Mouth, one of the Chan brothers, and his wife were going to carry out a special moment. They halted for a moment when they observed the general searching for something. There was nothing to see, and so the general walked away. Ah F.A., Big Mouth's brother, is also on the lookout for him, as the military has instructed him to do so. Ah F.A. almost caught the couple in the act, but they were already finished before he arrived. A chicken had been seen in the general search area, which surprised him. Big Mouth was chastised by F.A. when the soldier saw him wasting water. So that it might be preserved, they carried the chicken back to the general, who was overjoyed to see his lost chicken. After that, the brothers made a wish to the village's gods by lighting a candle. Ah F.A. advises his brother not to have any more children since they are so impoverished that they can't bear it anymore. Ah F.A. does not want to follow in the footsteps of their father, who bore them several siblings before abandoning them and dying while they were left to care for their mother alone. So that they wouldn't have any more children and to safeguard their crops and village, Ah F.A. begged the local god to circumcise his brother. He also mended the straw man who was protecting the crops from bugs. To keep themselves and their grandmother fed, the children are frying chicken. The Chan family, consisting of the children, their blind mother, and their mentally ill sister, lives in severe poverty and must thus share the little harvest. When one of Afa's children requested whether he might use the teacher's Japanese name, Afa responded only if he died. In this case, he may use his Japanese name. On the next day, when Afa sees his younger son urinating in the fields, he becomes outraged. His older brothers had told him how to pee the crops so that they would grow even more significant and bear more crops, the kid said AFA. In an effort to discipline his children, AFA dashes at them. In the village later that day, there will be an air raid drill for ladies and the disabled leader and the general. The exercise was attended by ladies of all ages. Water from the river was brought to the individual and distributed among the group. First aid for potential troops injuries was a regular part of their training as well. An announcement is being made in front of the ladies by a Japanese officer at the same time. He's teaching them everything about their American enemies, how they can rape women everywhere, and how to protect themselves from them. He also advises them to remain on the lookout for their adversaries. He also detailed their appearance and their excitement at meeting a married lady. They giggled and laughed as he showed her how large American organs are. They've resumed their practice sessions. Later that night, a trader from Paris arrived in the village with some goods. Villagers are awestruck at the array of items available. However, they were unable to pay for the goods, so they tried to barter them for food, but the seller turned them down. Big Mouth and his family returned to their house and began searching for items they might exchange. Big Mouth's mother got in on the action as well, grabbing hold of his pants. When he realized this, he became enraged and yelled at his mother. Big Mouth's wife made a hot noodle for the whole family the following day. While F.A. was fetching water for Narcissus, Big Mouth also fed her mentally ill sister. For the sake of quality control, F.A. and Big Mouth walked out to the fields. When birds started showing up to eat their crops, F.A. became enraged, so he frightened them away. A loud bang may be heard not far away. The community is under siege by enemies who have begun dropping bombs. While this is going on, children are being taught by their teachers to join the Japanese military in school. 
Because they were taught how to deal with a conflict at an early age, they know how to provide basic first aid and how to survive. Their newfound skills are helpful when confronted by the enemy. One of the students discovered a piece of the explosion and brought it to the instructor for safekeeping. After he turned in the piece, he was given compensation. As a side note, Chan's brother's aunt stayed in the town as a safe haven after Tokyo was bombed. Their mother's sister, Yu Niang, with her husband and two children. The brothers arrived at Chan's home in a buffalo-drawn cart, welcoming them. Dinner was also served by the brother's mother, who prepared the meal for the visiting relatives. It's easy to discern the disparity in the upbringing of the two sets of parents. While Chan's family is used to hardship, Yu Niang's is a little more fortunate. The children of Yu Niang are making fun of those of the Chan. Even though the Chans are hungry, the visitors are feasting delicious food. In order to avoid intimidating their guests, children are not allowed to stare at them. It was Big Mouth's promise to the children that they would be allowed to eat after the visitors. The family of the general soon came to welcome the visitors from Tokyo. Dining with the guests is an honor. The general briefed the visitors on the current state of the fight with the United States. When the Chan children watched the fish being turned over, they wept bitterly, knowing how hungry they were. After the visitors had departed, the Chan shared the food that was still left. They are forced to consume the fish bones because they have no other option. Chan's property is under threat by Yu Niang's husband, who has a terrible plan in mind. While her sister's family condition is heartbreaking, they are taking it for granted and, even worse, deceiving them into selling the property. The family that paid them honor will never forgive her husband's scheme. Yu Niang's family moves into the Chan's house. In the meantime, the spouse of Yu Niang visited the property to speak with the FA and Big Mouth about the land sale plan. They are upset by the news and have no option but to accept it because of the existing circumstances. Yamamoto, a Japanese man who was accompanying the general to the farm, entered when Big Mouth's wife was busy with household duties. The buffaloes are being evacuated because they will be helpful to in the war effort. Without authorization, they savagely escorted the animals. Chan's mother is utterly distraught by this. There are no animals on the farm that Narcissus supports being taken from the property by the Japanese. Chan's mother saw someone come over to their home on the same night and assumed it was a robber coming in via the back door. All of a F.A. and Big Mouth's family members got up and went to check on their mother's distress as soon as they awake. When they peered inside, they discovered a soldier camped out there. According to him, the Japanese planned to enlist him and the rest of his crew into combat, something they do not want to do. He learned that his wife was expecting their first child when he just got married. Despite his hatred for the Americans, he is determined to remain a faithful follower of the Japanese emperor. His devotion is shown by his singing the Japanese song that he was taught in the military camp. In front of everyone, the soldier broke down in tears. He was given food and drink by the Chan family and a place to stay. The problem is that he won't be able to remain that long. Playing on a bridge where bombs were dropped the previous day is what children want to do on their way to do on the following day. They are oblivious to the dangers that this might pose to them. Meanwhile, they waited for the planes to dump bombs on the village. When a minor child by the name of Stinky Head heard the planes rumbling, they rushed over to check what was going on. For a while, it seemed like a harmless toy, but as time passed, they began to see the danger in what they had been waiting for. Meanwhile, Afa's neighbor informs them that a giant iron has arrived on their farm. As soon as he heard the commotion, he raced to the scene to see what was going on. They were told to drop and cover by the general when he arrived. The bomb didn't go off, but it's still dangerous to go too close to it. Rather than fleeing from the bomb, everyone gathers around it in an attempt to learn more about it. The bomb is being detonated in ingenious ways. To see whether the bomb would go off or not, the Chan brothers courageously approached it and attempted to move it. Some of them even mocked the bomb by displaying it in public as if it were a memento. The Chan brothers were the ones who delivered the explosive to their residence. They were unable to determine where to plant the bomb, so they decided to place it at their sister's place. The device attracted the Japanese's curiosity, and they considered the possibility of selling it. Consequently, this supposedly priceless jewel will be in possession of the Chan brothers. Everyone in the community worshipped the bomb as if it were an expression of the god. The bomb will be delivered to the city's capital by the general. Having followed the general to their town, the Chan brothers became an immediate celebrity. 
They maintained the bomb cold by drizzling water on it as they traveled. Because the sun is so intense, AFA advises the general to remove his clothes while traveling. On the other hand, the general is concerned about his reputation as a military leader because of this disrespectful behavior. In order to avoid the bomb exploding, they crossed a wooden bridge. The bomb was saved by the Chan brothers. Meanwhile, they've arrived at a dangerously high staircase that they must now climb while toting a massive explosive. They arrived in the capital city not long after that. They pose with the general in front of a painting of Mount Fuji as a backdrop to commemorate their success in rescuing a bomb. Upon receiving the news, the officer snapped and told the general that exposing people to a bomb was just too risky. AFA demonstrates to the officer that the bomb will not go off by repeatedly stomping on it with a piece of wood. To fend off the Chan brothers and the crowd, the cop reaches for his gun. In order to drop and toss the bomb, they need to carry it to a nearby coastal region. The bomb is thrown into the water by F.A. and Big Mouth. While they waited for anything to happen, nothing did. An explosion occurs as they prepare to return home. The officer did the correct thing by deciding to intervene before anybody was harmed by this idiocy. Fish are already swarming the shoreline after the blast. Everyone who observed the incident should pick up as many fish as possible. On the other hand, the ladies in Chan's residence prepared for their arrival. However, they get disappointed when the Chan brothers returned without a handful amount in exchange for the bomb. Instead, they brought plenty of fish. The movie ends with the family sharing the fish later that night. Big Mouth's wife is disappointed for not receiving any gifts from her husband. Everyone is happy and complete from the dinner they shared after a stressful day. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.